Welcome back. We are looking at the frozen Jeep once again. We're doing another change. So we were running four rigid, four amp hour, 20 volt drill batteries, two sets in parallel, two sets in series and two in parallel, four batteries total. And they couldn't handle the 40 volts. The brushes kept, uh, kept uh, coming out of the motor. You can, I couldn't get that piece out completely. That has embedded itself into the connector. So e even though we were decreasing the PWM signal with a lot of weight in the vehicle, you have two kids going that fast with these motors at that high of a voltage, the brushes couldn't handle the peak voltage still. So the PWM signal doesn't decrease the voltage, all it does is decrease the amount of time that voltage is being sent to the brushes, and that's too high of a voltage, it still arcs too much to run continuously. So what I'm going to do is, we were running these batteries, so these are two lithium iron phosphate, 12 volt, 20 amp hour batteries, we are running those in series. It, uh, normal voltage is about 28 volts out of those, and we're running those with a single, 887. Well, we're switching over to Lyle's 3D printed dual gearboxes with first gear delete. We're going to try running this, not for racing, but for just around the yard. We'll see how reliable the gearboxes hold up for hours of use. I think looking at them, we, we tore them apart to grease them and install the motors. They look like they should hold up better than the stock ones. I just ran some RPM tests. So this is a stock gearbox running 23 tooth pinion. These are the Lyle's 3D printed gearboxes. I have 14 tooth pinion gears on those. And that was really, really the only thing I could fit without like modifying the gearbox to, to fit more. I'll show you why in just a little bit. So I just did some RPM tests. So final RPM, final drive RPM. I have a laser RPM reader. So this was giving me about 200 RPM and 400 RPM. So this should double the speed roughly. <laughs> it's, that might be a little too fast. We'll see. So at 18 volts, this might be going in the 15 to 20 mile per hour range. And with two of these motors, I think it's going to remain reliable. We'll see. That's what we're going to test. So, a couple issues so far with the gearbox, which I don't know if it's just my axle. It's the standard Power Wheels Jeep. But I did have to stick the axle in a drill and hit it with some emery cloth just to get the, the bearings to, to fit on. I don't know if that's because it's the threaded axle or if there was just corrosion on the axle that I had to knock off, but I did have to hit it with some memory cloth for a little bit. So I got one in and now I got to do the second one. Let's take a look at these, these gears. These are the 3D printed gears. There is a bearing in these, which is nice to see. They do, they do have a little bit of force in, when, when in the gearbox. Yeah, the motor is pushing this way and it's pushing this. Yeah, the motor's spinning here, and then you have another force being applied in the opposite direction here. So there is a rotational force. So you can see that that bearing is well positioned to take take that rotational force and prevent heat buildup. Now, what I was doing with the stock gearboxes is I just buy these these gears on Amazon. All right, these gears are. 3 16 inner diameter, 3 8 inch outer diameter, and 1 8 uh, wide. And what I do is I just put them in a drill press. I put the gear in a drill press and I slowly work my way up to the 3 8 inch diameter drill bit. And then I just press them in with a vise. And now you got a nice, beer, nice bearing. I do both sides. And that prevents these from melting and melting the gearboxes. So that worked pretty good in the stock gearboxes. That's what we're, we're running in the Jeep. Because at 24 volts, this is eight. This is the Johnson 887 motor. At 18 volts, it's rated for 23,500 RPM. And we're running about 10 volts higher than that. We're, I didn't measure the RPM. I don't think I've measured the unloaded RPM on these motors at with two lithium iron phosphates in series, but yeah, it's probably in the 30,000 RPM range with a 13, 
with a 23 tooth pinion gear, these things are cooking. So that's what we're taking out. So these are our adapters and we do sell these motors. They're just standard 887s and we do sell these adapters and these adapters are designed to fit right into a 7R gearbox. They are pretty tight fitting into the Lyles 3D printed box because that's not meant to fit the same diameter collar that comes on the stock Power Wheels motor. You know, this is the collar, so this is what we designed the spacer to fit is that diameter into a 7R gearbox. But it was close enough where with a with a 14 tooth pinion gear I did, did get it to work. All right, let me get this disassembled. I got to take the motors out of this gearbox and that gearbox and put them into this one. Here's the motor coming out. Now, these are 3D printed adapters. They're not the most robust adapter. All it's meant to do is transfer the force from these bolts. They stick through the gearbox, so we do provide the correct length. This is an M4. The M4 will go through the 7R gearbox into the adapter. There's a nut in the, in the adapter, and then that's going to transfer the force to these M5 screws, which those are also included if you buy the hardware with these adapters. And that screws into the M5 location on the, on the motors. Now, when taking the pinion gears off, a lot of time it's really difficult to get one off without breaking the adapter. So I do recommend buy some spares of these if you want to try try these motors out. You can easily reuse this hardware. It's just that the spacer is is prone to breaking when disassembling. I'll see if I can save it. There's a notch here so you can access the set screw. So these do these adapters do tend to crack. This is a very thin thin piece here. It's the part where I've seen quite a few fail. This is, yeah, it doesn't matter when it's when it's it's in there. It's still held tight up against the gearbox, and it's it's held from rotating rotating this way. You know, so it counteracts the force. No failures have happened here because this is where you're transferring the for, the rotational force from from this. M4 is going through the gearbox, this M5 into the motor, and then this is just to keep it centered. You have to pull these nuts out, you just put the M4 bolt in it, pull it out, comes right out. Now do it, if you do want to install these in any gearbox other than a 7R, you need to make sure you get the correct length M4 screws to go into the adapter. I found with the Lyles 3D printed gearbox of the size that I had on hand, the uh, 12 millimeter long worked the best. So as they go through, they're going to hit the motor so that they can only go so far before you start hitting the motor and they, they stop going. Now putting these on, be careful. This is, it is pretty durable polycarbonate. It is flame retardant polycarbonate just because these motors do catch on fire occasionally when you're putting too much power into them. I've never seen these motors catch on fire, but many of the 775s we've tested have, have burst into flames. So I do recommend using flame retardant materials right up against the motor. These gearboxes have been completely messed up. They have been melted in just about every every place that's skip they're skipping teeth it was time for an upgrade as far as i can tell this spacer is good to reuse i don't see anything any reason to not reuse this one so i'm just going to put this one leave this one nothing to do there four m4 by 12 i had m4 by 12 and m4 by 16 the 16s were too long i ended up stacking quite a few washers on top and it was still Still a little bit too long, so I went with the 12 millimeter. Where then I couldn't use the washer to get it to bite on the nut in the spacer. Uh, I don't like not using the washer because it's, it's just going right on the 3D printed material. I think it'll be fine. We'll see. We'll test it. I have both pinion gears in place. Meshes look pretty good. All this hardware's tightened up. I think we're ready to lubricate and assemble. So there it is, lubricated, got both motors on with our adapters. I'm going to go ahead and screw it together and get it in the Jeep. I find 
when assembling these, it sounds like you're cracking the gearbox, but it's the layers sliding past each other. Was the first time it happened, it terrified me. It's like, did I seriously just crack it? No, it's the layers. They're just sliding by each other and it sounds like they're cracking. That is quite loud. Here's my nice shiny axle. My bearings do move pretty nicely on the area where I need them to move. Which, the bearings don't actually spin on this, the, the axle stationary, so. The bearings just there to transfer the force. From. Here it is, the uh, 4887 motors all <laughs> put in a, a Jeep for my two year old to ride around in. Yeah, this, but it's both of the kids' Jeeps, uh, two and five, but uh, the two year old has claimed ownership of the frozen Jeep. So he's the one that you usually see test driving it. We will. We'll see you guys again in the morning when they wake up and let them take it for a test drive. See how it, see how it goes. Watch where you're going! Jeez! Is it good like that? Yeah. Should we leave it like that or make it faster? Mm -hmm. Even faster? Yeah. Now we're going to leave it like that.